This is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Matt. Hello. Hello. So for folks, for that don't, yeah, folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? I am Matt Gordon. I'm in Lexington, Kentucky, as you can see by the beautiful horse farm that's definitely right behind me. Yes. Um, I am a senior architect for Centric Consulting. So I do uh, data and analytics consulting for us. Um, have been in consulting for, for a while. Um, but started out as kind of in IT, turned into a DBA and turned into a data consultant and off we went. And how, so you've been a data platform MVP for, is it five, six years? I was, this was my fifth year. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I was renewed this year and the site says five. I checked it. So yeah. <laughs> I always like to ask because it, it's sometimes it's really confusing and they occasionally move the, the, the buckets around and the, the organization. So, so what's included within the data platform space? Well, so, you know, way, way, way back when I would say these were the SQL Server MVPs, but it's it's broadened quite a bit, right? So the data platform, you've still got SQL Server folks in there, and that's what they do, and that's awesome. Um, but you've got the whole Azure data platform. So you've got Synapse people in there. You could have Power BI people in there. You could have, you know, any of that data stuff, um, some of the stuff that's growing. Like, I don't know that there is one, but you could have one where... Azure Data Explorer is your thing, and and you speak about it and blog about it and know it well and all that, and that that's your route. Uh, but yeah, most of the people I know, I would say, are broadly analytics or, you know, were SQL Server DBAs and turned into consultants or something like that, or are still DBAs that that speak or or blog or whatever, and 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 that's the world they're in. But we all play nice mostly. Well, that's why it, it's interesting because you have people that. Uh, for for non techies might listen to some of what you just described and say yeah but there there are Azure MVPs that describe it similar there are business application MVPs which are more the front end more the power platform you know side of things and but the folks that I know are data platform kind of I would say the common theme that I see is is kind of the DBA traditionally like the more the DBA function although some are in the Azure side. It's interesting to me, especially, you know, I got involved in community stuff back in basically 2013. That was the first past summit that I went to. And it's been interesting to see people's journeys. A lot of people that I remember from that event speaking and their title was lead DBA or DBA this somewhere um, and where all those different journeys have gone. You know, a lot of those people that I remember making those notes, like great speaker, great content, want to hear more from them. Um, they still speak, they still contribute to stuff, but not a lot of them are doing what they were. Some of them still are, hmm. you know, but a lot of them have gone the data engineering route or into analytics or, or um, you know, just there's a lot of different paths that data can take you. Uh, but I think just the nature of timing and kind of how the industry evolved, you know, a lot of the people kind of maybe around my career age, we came from the DBA world. Some of us are still there and some of us aren't. What's an observation that I had? I would mention this before we started you know, recording, but uh, uh, is that uh, when I kind of got into the Microsoft ecosystem, like I, I got involved with the Microsoft space in about, roughly about 2005 and joined Microsoft and, and coming from like the data warehousing world and working with the DBAs extensively yeah. um, in the Microsoft ecosystem, like the, it just kind of disappeared people within that role. Here we are, we're in this era, we are creating more content, more data than ever before. Remember when the, the big data platform providers started coming out, I'm like, everything's big data. What is this? What does big yeah. data really mean? And where are all the DBAs? Because with all that data, it's not like you could just point your front end system at a database and it works magically. There's effort behind the cleanup and organization of that data. Well, and that, right, some of these boundaries are hard to define, right? Because like I've gone into some places at, as a consultant and you'll have a developer or somebody ask the question like, all right, we have a database that's 20 terabytes or whatever, and it's having the issues you would expect it to have. And they will ask like, are we dealing with big data? It's like, well, it's large, but conceptually big data really is something kind of different. 
Um, and right, and that's you know kind of as our tools have changed, especially as the cloud providers have matured and things like that. Um, there's, I think there's always going to be a space for your traditional operational D DBAs. That role is going to evolve. It already has. But right, a lot of these kind of data tools where we can just shove a bunch of stuff in there and, and visualize it, report against it, all that, you know, it doesn't need, um, it doesn't need the same sort of supporting roles that, that we always used to have, um, you know, so it, it's, it's certainly an interesting time to be involved. It's I, I'm very glad this is the world that I ended up in because there's so many different paths that can take, um, you know, and I know the one I'm on now and it, could that change in five years? I don't know because, you know, we may not know what the next big thing is and yeah. maybe the next big thing is really interesting and we want to pursue that. You know, I had, so two of my four kids kind of went the data science route and uh, two very different. One is the healthcare, one is in uh, atmospheric sciences, but both kind of gravitating back towards, you know, the, the tools and the technology side and the, you know, just the, yeah. the, the data and all the different roles. And I, I advised them, I said, look, there, you can't go wrong with the career path around, uh, you know, a DBA type, you know, data management, uh, data science type function, because every company needs that. Yeah. And whether they've realized it or not, you're right. Every company needs people that wrangle data, whether they're DBAs, whether they're data engineers, data scientists, maybe some of both, yeah. some of all three. Um, it's not going away. And it's not like we're producing less data on, on anything. You know, a lot of, I can think of consulting engagements I've had where it's basically like we have a relational system for the industry that we're in. We know there are insights in here. We know that there's value that, you know, we can help bring to our clients or we can help increase our sales because we don't have a good understanding of what we're selling and what customers are doing and all that. And they, it's questions they've had. They don't know how to get those answers. And then yeah. you go, right. Then you leave that kind of operational world into, well, let's do some analytics on this. Let's find the right platform and, and tools for you so you can figure that out. You know, I, I often use the kind of the analogy. I have a good friend who got his master's in music composition. And I was over doing kind of a studio project. He had a lot of equipment and a very talented musician. And we were recording a bunch of stuff. And we were using, this is a few years back, but we were using Cakewalk. So I'm at his house. Hmm. And we're editing some stuff. And I'm like, hey, I could do this editing. Like, I could get this set up. So I went and purchased Cakewalk and installed it and had no idea how to go and set up. Like, he had finally tuned it, massaged it, and, and, and set it up in a way that it was very, very easy. I yep. look at a lot of what DBAs do, a lot of, like, what you know, th th this world um, where it, it's like Power BI, like, I know how to use the basics of Power BI. I've gone in and I've done a few things, but I also know enough to realize that how much cleanup, how much organization, is somebody that understands how to bring the pieces together, how right. important that role is. You, it's Power BI is not an out of the box solution. And that's, and you know, I don't, I would credit whoever I remember saying this, but I can't remember who it was. They said the biggest problem with SQL Server is that it just runs. And right, so you can stuff data into it. You can maybe take backups and do all the stuff you're supposed to do. The thing, even as smart as it gets, even, you know, you watch the keynote, 2022 does cool stuff. The art of the performance tuning and it's art and science, that's not going anywhere because you're right. The bigger the scale gets and you can say, oh, it thinks through some of this stuff. But really where that's headed is, yeah, the query engine's a little smarter. Yeah, it's going to add some intelligence on top of that. You still need somebody that understands that data well, understands the structures underneath and uses kind of the new tools we had. I kill, I would have killed for some of the stuff that we have now 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'd have gotten a lot more sleep, but you know, you still need that knowledge. It's just, you know, maybe you don't have to supervise your backups anymore because you're in the cloud and it's done for you, but making things go faster, that's not going anywhere. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's it, right. Cause it's not, not just about, well, utilize the capabilities that are out there. Data lifecycle, a lot of that stuff you can automate. Yeah, I work for an ISV that creates those kinds of solutions. Yeah. You still have to architect those solutions, be smart about that. You still need to be able to go in and optimize based on whatever the new changes are, the, the features are. But then you have other stuff that just that changes. As you said, you could throw new data on it. You can expand on what's already there. Then you reorg. 
then you acquire a company or then you're acquired or, right. you know, or a million other things that could happen there. Well, yeah. I mean, Matt, what kind of stuff are you out actively talking about? Like what are the hot topics in the space right now? So my hot topics, because I was involved, you know, I was in consulting for a while, stepped away from that um, and went to work for a company as their director of cloud administration, basically to manage a cloud migration that they did. So in, in, in the end, it, it evolved into essentially a consulting gig that I did for about two years before stepping officially back into that space. Yeah. Um, so my migrations have been on my mind a lot. Um, we were involved in a kind of a soup to nuts one. It wasn't yeah. just, let's take a couple databases and put it up there. It's our entire on-premise world is going up. Yeah. Um, so I've spent, you know, and, and leading into that, I, that's most of what I was doing as a consultant for probably two or three years before then. So, um, you know, I've seen ones go well, I've seen ones go poorly, um, kind of know how to set them up for success. And if there's a, if those elements are missing, what's going to happen, and then kind of as they run, um, some things you have to watch out for and taking care of the people that are doing them too. Yep. Going back to that kind of operational thing, you got to keep the lights on while you're moving all that stuff. And if the same team is doing both, you're going to chew them up. Yep. Um, so I've mostly been, you know, mostly technical topics around that. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing I hadn't done until the last couple of years was do some kind of professional development around that. And, you know, for those that are in the operational space, how do you take care of yourself? How do you speak up for you and, and your team and, and prevent getting in the boat where you're the on call for when the old stuff breaks and you're working nights and weekends to get the new stuff up there? Um, have a lot of passionate feelings but about isn't, that. Isn't that the glamour that you sign up for when you say go down the IT track? <laughs> uh, <laughs> glamour yeah. is one way to describe it it doesn't usually work out like that sorry i meant to say the glamour i had needed to have the air quotes. sorry yeah yeah well and it's kind of one of those things because it's not it's not black or white yeah. you know because at, at a certain career stage i certainly went through that and in the end it was good for me you know i worked a ton of hours doing high availability stuff. Well, that set the table for me to go into consulting because there yeah. was a firm that was like, we need an HA person. We think you know this. Yeah. Um, had I not put in those long hours, you know, I wouldn't have gotten that job. But on the, on the flip side, and that's kind of, and I have a talk that I've been submitting to some conferences next year about how you weigh that. You know, there is a right time maybe, listen, you talk to your partner, your family, or if it's just you, it's, it's a short talk, yeah. but it's, am I going to commit to this? Cause I think it's going to set the stage for me to kind of take that next step versus listen, I'm at the point in my career in life where that's not right for me and, and that that's okay to say, yeah. and then think about what the consequences might be and, and just how to position yourself for success without running yourself into the ground, which I've done. Yeah, no, that's a, I, uh, well, I, I don't think you can work in IT in any role and not have had that own internal discussion around that. And there's, uh, I mean, there's times of, of my life and I've spent a, you know, a good portion of my career more on the startup, you know, the front lines yep. than, than mm -hmm. the larger company. Yeah. And a lot of times without benefits, there's no 401k, there's a lot of high risk around it. But I learned so much and I, you know, and so it was, I, I wouldn't trade that for any, well, a couple of them I would trade. I'd be happy to trade. Well, but, that's why yeah. I say that's, yeah. that's why, you know, it, yeah. I, I hope that session gets picked up at a couple places next year. I never envisioned myself doing professional development talks, Yeah, but I right. have found them so useful yeah. that I was like, well, I think I have something to contribute here. And, and, uh, cause it's not, and I'll say this, having been involved both as an outside employee and inside as well, when you go into a migration project, especially a large scale one, personnel is rarely considered. Yeah. It's, oh, we need this team involved. We need these other teams involved. Maybe not, not always even that, but it's not, well, we're going to ask our core team to do X and Y. Well, your core team is only so many folks that, and, you know, if probably have some years of experience under their belt, people with years of experience tend to have partners and families and all that that have to be considered. And you know, it's pretty rare that it's like, well, we can't work those people too hard. So let's bring in some outside help. Let's hire yeah. more, let's get consultants, whatever. It's like pedal to the metal, you know, hardcore, let's do it. And if, and odds are the team's not along for the ride and the project ends up stuck in a pretty awkward spot as people start to leave. You know, um, one 
thing that I mean, it's definitely a, an industry wide trend that you're seeing with so much focus. And I know it's a different workload, it's a different area, but around like the Microsoft Viva and all the employee experience stuff. But you do see are those topics permeating yeah. across it, you know, all areas. So to go in, like I was just at this event in Copenhagen and there were sessions on, you know, diversity and inclusion and kind of all that stuff. A lot, there's accessibility sessions. There were career development and networking, you know, sessions is, you know, mixed in with the technology tracks. And it's good to see that and healthy turnout at a lot of those, those sessions. So, So people are, are, I think there's a lot more, having had this shared experience of the pandemic, there's a lot more empathy in the tech world i i think there is i mean there's been nothing good about any of this right but what it did so all the bad things that came with blurring the line between work and home i think you're right the one thing and it just (laughs) it's not universal for sure but the one thing i have seen both in kind of community events like that and even companies that never used to think this way before is more attention to the fact that it's a person it's not a resource right and that person is dealing with everything we've all been dealing with. And then whatever challenges they have could be from this, could be not from this. Right. Um, and, and considering that as you plan work and, and plan staffing levels, you know, again, not every company's doing this. No. Some of them are still like, ah, just don't watch the news. Everything's fine. And don't worry about anything. And also work 80 hours a week for us. Uh, but some are, and I think the most successful companies as we move forward are going to be the ones that think about their people as people right well it's we, and we've been all saying this for years is burnout is real and absolutely and it, especially again you know the vast majority of people within the tech sector have very marketable skills even in this down economy it's like the the so much of us are essential to keep all the other areas of the business up and running we're so yeah. You know, at least in the Western world, we are so tech reliant on those things. And so you have to be thoughtful about that health and well-being of your employees. Yeah. And, and from a practical perspective, it's so expensive to replace a good person. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who's got domain knowledge, tech experience, all that. They walk out the door because because you've worked them too hard or whatever. Getting that equivalent person, it's really expensive and takes a long time. So it's better to just not do that. Yep. Treat people nice. Pam well, treat exactly. people like humans. Yeah. Yeah. Basic stuff. Uh, yeah. It's not hard. No. <laughs> no. Well, well, Matt, really appreciate your time today. Uh, for folks that want to connect with you, reach out to you, what are the best ways to reach you? Yes, I encourage that. Um, I am SQL at Speed everywhere online. So uh, SQL at Speed on Twitter, eventually Mastodon. I just haven't had the time to do that yet, but I'll, I'll have that handle there as well, hopefully. Uh, uh, SQL at Speed on LinkedIn and all my presentations and stuff are up on GitHub. Um, you could go tell me what's wrong with all my slides if you want to do that. <laughs> that that's an interesting approach to... Uh, <laughs> I, you know, yeah. it, it happens. Sometimes yeah. somebody's poked around and said, I think you should change this to say this. It's like, I, I, I would I always heard like, feedback. I heard like horror stories of people getting heckled by at, at conferences, given, given sessions. And I always wanted that. I finally had one. It wasn't, I mean, heckle. People told me, ah, oh, he was heckling. I was like, no, he asked really good questions. And I didn't have answers there. I'm good friends with the guy now, years later, 10 years later. And I went back and I researched and I modified those slides to answer those questions. Well, so, and that's the thing. Like a lot of speakers say it. I think almost all of us mean it. Like sincerely, we want feedback. You know, the joke I always say, I, I, I stole from an old boss of mine. I was like, if you think this was terrible, email me. And tell me why. If you think it was good, tweet it so so everybody knows. But yeah. really, we always want to get better. I don't want to give the same talk if you sat there and you're like, eh, that was yeah. all right. right. I want it to be better than that. And I want feedback on kind of what would have made it better for you. So we yeah. all mean it. Yeah. I wish people were a bit more free with their feedback there. You know, we agreed. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Matt, hey, it was great connecting. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks so much. Wow.